And welcome everyone to Arizona Football 2023 Season Preview. I'm KGUN 9 Sports Director Jason Barr. During this digital only special, my colleagues and I will help get you ready for the upcoming season, which will be the Wildcats final one in the Pac-12 Conference. It was the story that dominated the first part of training camp. All eyes are on Arizona football. And uh, you can't open up an article, you can't read anything on social media, you can't see anything on ESPN without an Arizona helmet. But by the time Arizona strapped on its helmets, the Pac-12 had become, well, the Pac-9. Our intention all along was to see what the Pac-12 um, could pull together. But a Pac-12 deal from Apple TV required viewers to purchase a subscription to watch Arizona Athletics. It offered $23 million per season to each university with no games on linear TV. At the end of the day, it was, uh, I think it was just not a strong enough deal for everybody to stick together. The Big 12 offers games on ESPN, Fox, and CBS. That's free TV and $31.7 million annually. It was about the future. It was about stability, both financially and competitively. I am very, very excited about this move to the Big 12. Dr. Robbins is not only the university president, he's a big sports fan and a regular at games. I'm hoping we're gonna be with the Big 12 for a long time. The Territorial Cup rivalry stays, with ASU joining the Wildcats in what will be a 16-team Big 12 Super Conference. I think this grows our ability nationally. We, are, we have opportunities to be exposed in all the different time uh, zones across the country. Uh, we compete you know, in a way, coast to coast, I think it can really help our program grow as well. I did tell our team this. I said, you guys are literally living through history. If you think about the, the guys that played college football from, let's call it 2020 to 2025, you lived through a pandemic, you went through a transfer portal rules that no one really ever thought would ever happen the way the amount of exchange of players. Then NIL, you started getting paid, and now you're sitting there looking at conferences that were historically uh, a group of 12, 10, 10, 12, whatever they were, turning into 16 mega conferences, you know, 16 team mega conference. And so Tucson becomes Big 12 country in 2024 25. The next episode is this year. We've got to play this thing out and go out, uh, you know, hopefully winners. Coming up in this Arizona football season preview, why Jed Fish says the offensive line is the strength of this year's team. Plus, we'll have features on linebacker Justin Flo, defensive lineman Bill Norton. We'll sit down with former U of A stars on the 25th anniversary of the 1998 team, and I'll introduce you to the Wildcats team chef. It is year three of the Jed Fish era. After going five and seven last season, the expectation around the U of A program now is that the Wildcats will be bull bound. When it comes to our team going into this season, We've talked about really two words, and it's earn it. Earn the conversation. Earn what people are saying right now uh, currently about you. Uh, people are beginning to talk about Arizona football in a different light. You've got to earn that. You've got to show and prove it, really, that you're worth the conversation. Quarterback Jaden Delora and the Wildcats were able to move the ball effectively a season ago. They finished sixth in the nation in passing yards per game. But the U of A was just 11th in the Pac-12 in both yards allowed and points allowed. Right after the season, that was the main focus, is trying to get some more bigger bodies in there uh, that fit what we do on defense. Uh, that was the main focus, you know, moving forward, was going and trying to get those bodies to really help us. Are we going to be better? Absolutely. How much? That's, that's going to be the question that needs to be answered. It was revealed earlier this year that starting quarterback Jaden Delora was at the center of a sexual assault case. At Pac-12 Media Day in Las Vegas, Delora read a statement and got emotional. The victim was a minor at the time back in 2018, and so was Delora along with another football player. Head coach Jed Fish said the university first learned about it last September and explained why Delora's status remained unchanged. That we can't make decisions, or it would be unfair to make decisions based upon information we don't have. And uh, there is no information, there won't be any information that is available under Hawaii law. Everything's sealed um, and expunged. So there really is nothing for us to learn. According to the civil documents obtained by KGUN 9, 
The incident took place in Honolulu, and both players, including Delora, pled guilty to second-degree sexual assault in family court. Part of the deal was a letter of apology. Neither football player was ever charged in a criminal court. Quarterback Jaden Delora will have plenty of options when it comes to throwing the football this season. Tedaroa McMillan led the Pac-12 as a freshman with 18 yards per reception last season. He's back bigger and stronger for his sophomore campaign. A lot of times a player makes their most improvement yeah. from freshman to, to sophomore year. Exactly. What do you expect from, from him? Yeah, no, I, and, and that happens because you kind of learn, you get out of that high school phase where everything was pretty much easy and you know you got to work a little bit harder. Uh, to get exactly what you want. And so I think just his mentality has changed. Senior Jacob Cowan returns for his second year with the Wildcats. This after a season in which he amassed over 1,000 yards receiving. And Tanner McLaughlin had 34 catches a year ago. That was the most by a Wildcat tight end since Rob Gronkowski had 47 back in 2008. I'm Tina Giuliano. Arizona football is going with the flow this season. Justin Flo was once regarded as the best high school linebacker in the country. And now on his journey, he finds himself here with the Wildcats. For me, it's just, you know, just being the best team player I can be. Teammates give him many nicknames, but Justin Flo calls himself a supervillain. It's like a third person view is like another alter ego. So I just use it and I just it pushes me every day. You know, when villains, they come from the, you know, when they have to go through all the adversity, it, 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 it makes you who you are. Flo was considered the top high school linebacker in the country in 2019 before committing to Oregon. Then that came with adversity, playing only two games in two seasons due to injury. I couldn't control injury, so, you know, I had to sit back and watch, and I feel like that. That really made me who I am today. Last fall, he played 10 games with the Ducks before transferring to Arizona. If your mindset's strong, it's not that big of a change. He brings that mindset to Tucson on and off the field. Pushing my guys to, you know, run to the ball and just, you know, to want it more. The Wildcats rarely land a player this highly ranked or with this much energy. He's a playmaker, you know, uh, but his, uh, his attitude and his juice, man, I love him. I came in, I, you know, everybody bring me in with welcome hands and uh man i love everybody here he's expected to start at linebacker next to jacob manu jacob manu yeah he, he always brings it so flo is focused on his fresh start maybe becoming the hero not only to himself but the team just wanted to bring that different mentality like just wanted to be a super superhero a super villain you know i'm blessed to be in arizona like i just see it as an opportunity every day reporting at the u of a tina giuliano kega nine I'm Ryan Fish. One play ended Jordan Morgan's 2022 season, but wound up extending his Wildcat career. He decided to spend one final year here anchoring Arizona's offensive line, both on and off the field. It looks like a NASA launch to get this guy to his uh, destination. Five years after taking up space on Marana High School's offensive line, Jordan Morgan's destination is getting back on the field. Last fall, some projected him as a first-round NFL draft pick until he tore his ACL in November. On senior day, he walked on the field at Arizona Stadium with a brace on his knee, unsure if he'd be back. You know, and to us, that was, uh, that was a huge win when Jordan finally made his decision of returning. Now nine months after surgery, the left tackle is once again cleared for liftoff. Thanks to a detailed plan from Arizona's training staff, in an off season where R and R meant recovery and rehab. First few months, it was it was pretty hard, but um, after that, um, I just took a positive outlook because that's all you ha really ha got to do. Everyone's been there for me: coaches, um, training staff, players, also. Now Morgan needs to be there for them, not just as a pillar on the left side of the line, but as a leader in the locker room. I mean, I'm one of the oldest dudes here. The Wildcats have 16 offensive linemen on the roster. 13 are freshmen or sophomores. Morgan is one of only two seniors. I, I didn't believe it uh, coming in uh, to the year, but now I have to really uh, lock in and understand that these guys look up to me. One of those young guys, Jonah Savanaya, known on the team as Big Jonah. Before I committed here, we connected right there. You know, he was one of the guys that came on my visit, and from there on, we kind of built that relationship. We're close. We live together. Uh, challenge each other. It's easy for us to just uh, be competitive. We push each other, you know, 
Uh, and sometimes Jordy be lifting heavier than me, and I, I get all jealous. And I lift heavier than him, and then he's like, ah, I got to step it up. Seven Ayea stepped it up last year as a freshman, starting all 12 of Arizona's games at guard. That success may have earned him a bigger challenge this fall. Arizona's coaches could move him outside to right tackle. At uh, tackle, I'm by myself. You know, I'm going to be one-on-one -on -one every play. Unlike a uh, guard, I have help uh, from my center and from the right tackle. So now that I'm on an island, so I basically have no help. But he does have some help in Morgan, who knows what it's like being a tackle, being on that island. Just told me, hey, man, uh, it's going to be tough out there. You know, there's going to be speed guys. There's going to be a lot of faster guys that to be ready for it. Morgan is ready for his comeback. His road to recovery could very well take him to the draft as the first Arizona offensive lineman taken since Eben Britton in 2009. I'm not really focused on the draft right now, nor like, where I'm at nationally or anything like that. So I'm just um, focused on the team, really. He opted to stay home one more year, in part because U of A football has had its own remarkable recovery. Three years ago, it wasn't, everyone was, had no hope, really, um, for the program. But um, now they see we're really building up. Everyone's hopping on the train and riding with us. A train or a NASA launch. No matter the metaphor, it seems like Morgan, Big Jonah, and the Wildcats are moving in the right direction. Oh, yeah. Desert Diamond is true Tucson. Tucson. Desert Diamond. True. Paths lead to Desert Diamond. Just like Jordan Morgan, another player who's seen the trajectory of the Arizona football program is Wildcat safety Traden Stukes. It's felt like a like a true staircase since I've gotten this college football. Traden Stukes remembers every step along the way because he first joined the Wildcats as a walk-on when I first made the travel squad or when I first got my first tackle. He's been here since 2020 and he's gone through um, really the transition of playing in a COVID season, the struggles that took place in that, that final season in 2020 as a walk-on freshman, and then earned himself a scholarship, then earned himself a starting job. And his Stukes improved, so has the program under Jed Fish. The belief has been a major change. Now, Stukes is considered a leader on this year's revamped defense. Both verbally and leading the defense in terms of his work ethic. I mean, it's a quieter type. Of, I would say it's like a lead by example kind of deal. Stukes won the program's off-season program. Every aspect from academics to community service to the weight room to on-field work. Trade in Stukes still has a step or two left on his journey, like finishing this season up with a bowl game. I'm Pat Paris. 25 years ago this fall, Arizona football turned in the best season in program history. The Wildcats going 12-1, finishing number four in the nation. Recently, I sat down for a conversation with the three captains from that 98 team. 25 years. Hard to believe, right? Man, hard to believe, man. I was just telling these guys, I, mean, I had my son that year, so that's kind of the way I keep up with it. So, but man, no, 25 years, man. But, you know, every time I look back on it and, and I remember, uh, you know, 12 and 1, I knew that that would be uh, something that would be hard to surpass. Yeah. For sure. It's crazy. I got two kids at UA now, <laughs> two daughters at UA. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's gone by way too fast. Yeah. Now we're husbands and dads and, you know, working full time and now you just look back at the memories and think my goodness what a time in our lives yeah and and to think back and to know that that was the best team to be a part of the best team with the, the best leaders and the best players uh, that it always kind of carries you forward for the rest of your life that you can take pride in that and yeah. coach Tomey did a great job of preparing a hundred boys to be men coach Tomey and your thoughts scooter when you when you think about this team and and where it was because of coach Tomey well I mean coach Tomey as Everybody knows he was just a great human being, period. So he, he, he taught you, he, he treated you like a son. I mean, Kelvin, he was like a dad, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, so 
that's the kind of person he was. So obviously you want to you want to play hard for a guy like that. You know, a uh, great leader. Uh, Coach Tommy brought together. He used to always say that it, it was about the guys. It was about the Jims and the Joes, and and that's the way he treated us. I mean, the hugs he used to give you it was genuine. The 1998 team had a genuine bond that actually began with a late season run in 1997 and an Insight.com bowl victory over New Mexico. To me, the 12 and one season was set. That, that previous second half of that, um, that previous season and that summer. That summer, I felt like we came together like real brothers. That 1998 season began with Dick Tomey taking the Wildcats to face his old school, the University of Hawaii. Arizona star Chris McAllister returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Is that an omen? Was that a sign of yeah. things to come? Maybe it was because now all of a sudden you had 100 kids believing that we were the best and that's how we took the field every week. One of the greatest plays in Arizona football history happened during that 98 season, the improbable early October win at Washington with Wildcat quarterback Ortiz Jenkins coming through in the closing seconds with the leap by the lake. He dives for the end zone, he's in, touchdown Arizona. I'm on the sideline, cramped out, can't move. End of and the I'm, game, I'm right? I'm looking yeah, over my yeah. shoulder and OJ is making the play. I'm like, no, yeah, he, we, that's what we all said. Yeah. We all said, no, don't run, because we thought he ain't gonna make no, it. No time out. No right. no no get it off, you know, and, you can't do. Know. and he runs right into Lester Town. Big, yeah. big linebacker. Six foot three, 260, one of the but toughest then he pack jumps, well. and you're like, whoa. Man, that athleticism, and you know, yeah. destiny took over, right? Yeah. A week later, the 5 and a Wildcats were back home for a top 10 showdown with UCLA. Trailing by just three points at the start of the fourth quarter, the Wildcats collapse. The Bruins score three times in a two minute and eight second span to beat the Cats 52 to 28. But in the locker room after that game, he said, make no mistake about it, man. You just got whipped in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. right? You got beat in the fourth quarter. And, and that resonated with us yeah. that we could have beaten UCLA nine out of ten times if things would have gone our way. But in that particular case, right, we had about four bad plays in a row on both sides of the ball, and it snowballed on us. So that one loss, though, showed the true character of our team. It showed the true character because we lost that game like the fifth game of the season, yep. Yep. and we won the next seven. Mm -hmm. That included a season-ending Territorial Cup victory over ASU. The Wildcats beat the Sun Devils in a memorable game at Arizona Stadium, 50-42, to running back Trung Candidate with a pair of long touchdown runs and a record-breaking 288 yards rushing. From the first kickoff, right, we had so much on the line in that particular game because we really were planning on going to the Rose Bowl at that point in time. Right, yeah. Scooter had a scoop and score oh. for a touchdown. Yep. Uh, I mean, just, but that game wasn't decided literally until the last. We all had roses last. in our mouth after yeah. that game. Yeah. Yeah. They, they give them to us. They, right. they, we figured we were in the Rose Bowl. Right. But a week later, UCLA lost a non-conference game to Miami, knocking the Bruins out of the national championship game and into Arizona's spot in the Rose Bowl. Arizona was instead heading for the Holiday Bowl against Nebraska. To give credit to Coach Tomey, like, don't cry over spilt milk, because what did he immediately do, right? When we then found out that it was Nebraska, he said, that's the defending national champions. That's where we want to get our program to be, and all that N stands for on their not helmet today. is not today. Not yeah. today. Yeah. Not today. December 30th, 1998 was not Nebraska's day. It was Arizona's day. The Wildcat defense slowing down the Huskers' option offense, winning 23-20, capping off a 12 and one season while earning a number four national ranking. Uh, obviously that was a great era, you know, for, for Wildcat sports, you know, and football, Certainly obviously was. we had it all moving yeah. in the right direction at that time. Yeah. What do you think the legacy will be of this 98 team? Uh, man, that again, we went out on top. I mean, that we showed that it could be done at Arizona. I know it can be done in Tucson. We've done it before. We were right there on the verge of a national championship berth. And I just feel like that uh, that belief is something that our team could, could take pride in. For anyone that was part of that and, and, and the fans that supported us that year, I hope that you have pride in that team because yes. we'll take that to the grave with us, yeah. honestly. Guys, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. And the 98 team is something that us Wildcat fans will always cherish and remember. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pat. Jed Fish has been trying to install a winning culture at Arizona. One player who will try to help him do that this season is defensive lineman Bill Norton. Newcomer Bill Norton transferred to Arizona in the offseason, but not just from any university. Norton was a reserve defensive tackle for Georgia. The formula worked, what we did there. Yes, the same Georgia Bulldogs that won back-to-back -back national titles. 
I think I've seen a lot of things. Uh, I've met a lot of cool players, met a lot of leaders, um, and that's the biggest thing I could bring. Norton is bringing his talents to Tucson in search of more playing time. I wanted to be a part of something great. I wanted to be uh, I wanted to be a part of history, pretty much. Um, I saw what Coach Fish was building. Um, I've seen the improvements that they made. We, I mean, you've seen we brought in we brought in some huge dudes. He's right. Norton is one of 25 players on the roster who top 300 pounds. They kind of follow the leadership of Bill. You know, for example, coming from Georgia, you know how to win national championships. You know how to win big games. Well, playing speaks for itself, but as far as what, what I can do off the field um, will help the team the most. It's easier to try to mess these guys together when you have guys that are used to winning. Uh, so some of these guys are bringing that attitude to our team, and our guys are bought in. We've been doing outside activities, just helping it for the team to get more connected. And when the team's connected and uh, all in sync, all playing for each other, um, that's a dangerous team. All paths lead to Desert Diamond. Tucson. Desert Diamond. Desert Diamond is true Tucson. This year's team is made up in part of back-to-back -back top 40 recruited classes. And the Wildcats have already landed a local five-star recruit for next season. South Point defensive lineman Elijah Rushing committed to the Wildcats over the summer. He chose Arizona over Tennessee, Oregon, and Notre Dame. Rushing is already six foot five and more than 250 pounds. Top South Point recruits had gone elsewhere in recent years, so Rushing's commitment was a big one for the Wildcats. The state doesn't get the recognition it needs to, and I feel like a decision like this will just just bring the cameras, bring everything over here, and just prove that we have we have people down here, we have talent down here. Elijah's older brother Cruz Rushing is a safety on this year's team after transferring from Florida. Arizona football doesn't just bear down, the Wildcats also chow down. Cooking team meals is the job of Chef Carl De La Osa. Recently, I visited Bear Down Kitchen to learn more. What does it take to feed the U of A football team? It takes a lot. Um, these guys go through about five cases of 30 dozen eggs uh, every three days. That's just a breakfast. About 80 pounds of watermelon in two days. Which is a portion of their fresh fruit. 150 pounds of potatoes just starches in one day. It's all the job of Bear Down Kitchen executive sous chef Carl De La Osa. The Nogales native first got his start at 15 in the kitchen of a golf resort. The love of food, I've always had a passion for it. De La Osa is the personal chef of all Wildcat student athletes, often getting to work as early as 3 a.m. My team is part of their team. De La Osa has a lot on his plate. We have more bacon coming. Overseeing 20 employees. His favorite food to cook is Asian food, which is just fine with the numerous Polynesian players on the football roster. Linebacker Jacob Manu and wide receiver Tedaroa McMillan included. What De La Osa finds sweet is... So the fact that we get to meet these players before they become pro. He'll tackle a fresh catch. So if you have a good meal, you have a good day. You see, before the Wildcats go duck hunting, De La Osa has the salmon in place. It's more omega-3s, more protein stuff to kind of rehydrate them and build them back up. How does it make you feel when a player comes up to you or, or sees you and says, man, Carl, that was so, that dish was delicious today? That, that's, that's the highlight of the day. And then there are the highlights on the field. You see, when the Wildcats taste success in the end zone, they taste even more of it that night. When they win, they have we, we do a, a, a full spread dinner for them, lobster tails, prime rib, steaks, grilled to order, pasta stations. And when the Wildcats don't win? We still feed them, but it, it all depends on what they want. But just the wins, give, give them top-notch stuff. That's hilarious. And who else is treated to a little VIP private dining? The all-important recruits. Prime rib carving stations, we had um, bruschetta, bruschetta stations, omelet stations, you know, brunch. In all, De La Osa feeds 250 student athletes and staff members. He's constantly making sure things go, shall we say, smoothly. Our process is put strategically for our athletes to, to make sure that you know, we, we feed them properly, they get their proper nutrients, and I'll hopefully adds up to the W's later. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap for Arizona football 2023 season preview. 
For everybody at KGUD 9, I'm Sports Director Jason Barr. We'll see you here at Arizona Stadium.